We're going to move on to our next panel, which will include Rachel Faust from Citizens Union, Sam Brookfield, and Tim Hofer. You want to go right ahead and get started? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Um, good morning, Chair Grodnick. Um, my name is Rachel Foss, and I'm the Policy and Research Manager for Citizens Union of the City of New York, an independent, nonpartisan civic organization of New Yorkers that promote good government and advance political reform in the state. We thank you for holding the hearing and thank Chair Brewer for continued uh, leadership on increasing the public's access to government information through technology. Um, we continue to believe that it is critically important for the city to take major steps that are outlined in, in this legislation. And as we have testified before to this committee, we do believe, similar to um, others tonight, that not tonight, this morning, um, that posting information online pro proactively can help to el eliminate some of the costs associated with FOIL. Um, so I'd just like to put that out there. Um, we've testified in favor of the previous version of this bill, so I'd just like to outline some of the changes and, and how, what our thoughts are on those. Um, we continue to support um, this bill as it um, creates a single data portal, um, but I'd just like to note that the previous legislation included publications um, other than data like reports, files, accounts, and records. And I, I understand that this might have been quite a lot of information, um, but we, we think ultimately that there could be a more unified approach in the city to releasing this information on a single site. I think one thing that we're interested in is, is publications that might include data like annual reports of agencies um, that might be cooked or processed, if you will, um, that could also be included in this because it provides similar types of information. Um, and we also support the bill's efforts to have um, web syndication technology because we think it's important for the public to have up-to-date information about what's going on in government, for them to be able to weigh in on the decisions that are being made while they're happening, not after the fact. Um, and regarding the standards, tech, uh, the technical standards policy in here and the development of them, I think the one thing we'd like to add that we'd recommend being added to this bill is that there be an opportunity for the public to comment on those standards, um, similar to regulations that are developed in the city. There should be a public comment period for that. Um, regarding the aging, agency compliance plan, um, the start date of this um, is July 5th. I think that's a little bit too soon. Um, that's the only timeline in the bill that I think Citizens Union recognizes a little bit problematic, as I'm sure you do as well. I know this bill was introduced earlier, so just a technical change. Um, we're, we're pleased that the bill has been changed to require agencies to detail the reasons why it, records are classified in the particular categories. We think this will give information both to the council and the mayor about technical limitations, but also give the public a little more ease that, to know that the information is not just being classified in those, in those categories to prevent the release of it. Um, I think that's an important change in the bill. Um, we also... We'd li like to recommend that DOIT publish an annual report on the implement implementation of this website. And um, we think that, you know, possibly there could be a public hearing on, on the impl impl implementation of the website as well. And that's most of my major points. Great. Thank you very much. I will note that the you are correct about the dates in the bill. They have been in there for uh, some time. I don't think anybody anticipates uh, requiring DOIT to do it in two weeks. But we got you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Chair Gorodnik and Councilmember Brewer. Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. My name is Sam Brookfield. I work in the Technology Department at ITAC, the New York City Industrial and Technology Assistance Corporation. We're an economic development organization with 22 years of experience helping New York City small businesses grow and create high-value jobs. We're funded by the New York State Foundation for Science, Technology, and Innovation as the designated Regional Technology Development, development Center for the New York City region. It's also a Manufacturing Extension Partnership Center under a nationwide National Institute of Standards and Technology program. We're one of three centers in the state funded to assist small research and development firms apply for Small Business Innovation Research Program funding from 11 federal agencies. Over the uh, past five years, ITAC clients have reported more than $1 billion in economic impact and 4,500 jobs created or retained. We also run sponsored programs for New York City companies such as our, council, our city council funded Move Smart, Stay Lean, Grow Fast program and our NYSERDA funded NYC Energy Tech program. And on behalf of my colleagues in the tech department, uh, Colleen Gibney and Franklin Madison, as well as the president of ITAC, Sarah Garrison, I'd like to thank uh, the city the council for your consistent and generous support of the Move Smart, Stay Lean, Grow Fast program. 
Um, ITAC supports the committee's effort to make city data openly accessible to businesses and individuals alike. We work with numerous innovative technology and manufacturing companies uh, that would greatly benefit from access to such data. We see excellent opportunities for three, three sectors in particular. Uh, the first deals with education, which Ms. Hoda has just spoke about, uh, so I will not reiterate that point. Uh, the second is dealing with software development, which several people have already spoken on also already. Uh, to that point, I'll just say that access to city data would provide software develop developers an affordable path to bring top-notch programs to the marketplace. Um, this could have a positive effect on small business innovation research grant applications, as well as meaningful data sets are highly desirable to create competitive proposals. As ITAC is one of the three NYSTAR-funded SBI regional, supports, regional specialist centers, we are committed to raising the number of SBI R winners coming from New York City. The third deals with uh, supply chain transparency. Opening up city data to public access would allow local manufacturing and technology firms to see what the city is buying and from whom. In other words, it would make the supply chain more transparent. This information would greatly benefit, be beneficial to such firms because it could provide essentially free market research and data to companies for which this can be prohibitive. Such an understanding of the marketplace would allow firms to better prepare themselves for future growth and expansion. And it would be an especially significant development for young and startup companies that may not have the financial resources Research on their own. We'd like to see the city work with the New York Public Library's science industry and business library, as well as local universities to make access and comprehension of this data as simple as possible. Thank you for the opportunity to testify before the council today. Thank you. Please. Uh, thank you for inviting me to testify. My name is Tim Hofer. I'm the Director of Operations for the Manhattan Institute's Empire Center for New York State Policy. Uh, the Manhattan Institute is a nonpartisan, non-for-profit thing. Tank, and the Empire Center is their Albany-based project that focuses on New York State government policy. Um, promoting better transparency and accountability in government is one of the Empire Center's major ongoing priorities. As a result, we take a strong focus on ensuring public access to government records, and so I would like to begin by commending the Chairman and Committee for your work on the very important issue of data accessibility. About two years ago, we launched our own open government project, a website known as seethroughny.net. Sorry. The site gives the public unrestricted access to millions of pieces of public information, including searchable databases of state and municipal employee salaries and pensions, collective bargaining agreements, state legislative and expenditure data, member item expenditures, and a benchmarking feature to compare local government spending. To gather this information, we filed more than 1,500 Freedom of Information Law requests during a two-year process. Uh, during a two-year period. In the process, we've heard many different explanations or excuses for failure to comply fully or on a timely basis with the state FOIA law. Some high-profile government entities, including the City of New York, often complain to us that agency resources are strained by the necessity of replying to numerous FOIA requests from the public and the news media. But today's technology, specifically the Internet, presents a solution for that problem. We believe that all public information should be proactively disclosed on the Internet, starting with expenditure, budget, and payroll records that will give taxpayers a clearer view of how the bulk of their tax, tax dollars are being spent. This would also free agencies of the time-consuming burden of processing multiple FOIA requests for different slices of the same material. Uh, it's a win-win for citizens and for government alike. A few agencies in New York State are already pursuing this strategy. Last year, for example, as we already heard, the State Senate began posting and updating its payroll every two weeks in a format that's accessible even to those who aren't computer savvy, which we think is very important. Uh, they also began posting their biannual expenditure reports in electronic form. Both of these reports are things that we post on See Through New York, so as you can imagine, we're a minimum of three less FOIL requests for the Senate every year. Uh, we believe the Senate majority took the initiative in this case, and, and as Andrew said, in a short period of time without significant expenditure, they were able to develop, format, and implement a uh, simple yet effective means to make the data available. Uh, while we commend the bill, we have five suggestions that I'm probably not going to get to, but um, we believe that you should standardize all public available data in the most simple and commonly used electronic formats. We think we should post the records for downloading from simple web pages linked prominently to the existing agency's websites and not to one master website. Uh, we'd like you to require the immediate posting of all newly generated public records in the same simple formats as a matter of routine. Uh, we believe that the updated records for financial transactions, contracts, and payrolls uh, should be done as soon as possible. 
that, that's okay. I'll just put it to you in the form of a question. What are your other recommendations? <laughs> I just had one more. Uh, the other was that non-electronic records should be posted as they are foiled, um, starting immediately to take the burden off of posting some of those records that are going to be that are good, that we believe would create the, the bigger burden on the agencies. Okay, and these these five suggestions you believe are not already included in this bill? To, to some extent, we think they are, and to some extent, they're not. Uh, basically, uh, the general overall theme here is that we think it's a little overly complicated, um, that posting the data from the agency to an agency website will, will prevent you from having to build uh, a more complicated and time-consuming data warehouse. On, on the FOIL question, you, your point was that you think that if a FOIL request is made and if it is a non-electronic record, then it should be it should be posted uh, online as it is delivered to the FOIL requester. Is that right? Right. Well, currently as it stands, if you if you request the person, the agency that's FOILed has to deliver you whatever you're foiling in the format they have it. So if it's not an electronic record, you get a photocopy of it. They're not required to scan it or do anything Correct. extra. So the theory is that if you already have to handle this document, instead of photocopying it, putting an envelope and mailing it, why not scan it and post it to your database? Okay. Councilmember Brewer? For ITAC, and please give Franklin our best, amongst others. Um, when you mentioned the supply chain transparency, that was stuck out as incredibly important. Um, databases would allow local manufacturing and technology firms to see what the city's buying and from whom. How do you get that information now, or is that not accessible? The reason I ask is that that's a constant question for the not just committees, but people trying to do research and calling us and so on. Hmm. How does that information, if at all, get transpired to your companies now? And I know you work really hard to try to grow these companies. Mm -hmm. As of now, um, companies do their own market research. Uh, they try. I mean, it's very difficult for some of them, especially the small startup ones. Um, and other than that, we work with local manufacturing residents. We have a manufacturing residence that helps facilitate that um, connecting businesses with suppliers and supply chains. Okay. So what you're saying is that even for the, uh, we think of the obvious savings in terms of um, economic development, but this would be an extra one where the market research could be something that could be done much more easily. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Do any of you want to weigh in on the question about uh, the timeline by which we should be putting this all into place? Obviously, there are some technical constraints. The bill itself anticipates uh, different categories of data, some of which might need to be trans transferred to the appropriate format, some of which are already in that format. Uh, do you have any um, comment or testimony on the speed or the time frame that's either contemplated in the bill or, uh, or any of your own? Go ahead. I just have one small thing that um, I didn't get to in my testimony, is that, and that is that for the technical standards manual, it has the bill has um, do it publishing it, and at the same time having the agencies do their own compliance plan. I would think it would make sense to give agencies a little bit more time after reviewing the technical standards policy to develop their compliance plan. So I think there could be a little bit of a buffer there. Um, and as, as far as the rollout period for the different years, I, I think it's important to set dates. Um, for it, given that, you know, as was mentioned earlier, we have some, some pieces in the law right now regarding COPIC and accessibility that aren't being met. So I think a, a date is an important, important way to track and, and make sure things are happening. But I don't think we have a particular sense of what's appropriate for city agencies giving technical concerns. But I think it's a, the idea of it, the concept of it is, is sensible. So, so you, you agree with the commissioner that give the technical standards, give them a chance to weigh in, give the public a chance to weigh in on the yes. technical standards as well, uh, but set firm timelines, whatever they are, and perhaps may not be able to be resolved at this hearing. Uh, yes, I, I, I do think that's, that sums up my, uh, our sense of what would be appropriate for the bill. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I would. Go ahead. Um, I, I think from our perspective, I, we tend to look at records as electronic or non-electronic. And for whatever is available electronic at this point, I can't imagine why 
each individual agency wouldn't be able to post it in some format um, within a 12-month period. And by some format, I think we're talking about more publicly acceptable things like CSV and text files. And I, I, I hate to see it get caught up in creating this unified system where all city data is in, because that's where I think it becomes burdensome and time-consuming. Okay. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, we, we appreciate your testimony. We're